So I understand that you report directly to the L'Oreal board as well as through your chief executive. How important has that been? Well, I, I report to the CEO and chairman of uh, the company. Uh, I have a dotted line with, uh, with the board that I see um, every year. Um, the reason behind is uh, about uh, independence, uh, which is absolutely key to, uh, to this mission. So I'm not in any silo. I do not belong to HR, to communication, or to finance, or to legal, or to marketing. <laughs> uh, um, at the same time, I'm not alone uh, with myself. But um, independence is absolutely key. Um, and the ability to, to speak up and to raise a challenging issue is absolutely key to, to the success of this mission. Uh, so how, how important is culture and what role do you have in terms of building a culture where people can challenge, ask hard questions? Well, I'll give you some example of uh, sentences that we look at. We say, typically in a meeting, uh, we had a, a meeting yesterday with the management committee of uh, uh, L'Oreal New Zealand, and we look at, um, at some sentences that uh, someone can say in any given organization. And the reason why we look at these sentences is because they should, ring, they should uh, uh, serve as, as a red flag, for instance. Uh, well, let's do it, but just once. <laughs> or no one will ever know. <laughs> or everyone does it. <coughs> well, don't worry, it's part of the culture here. So when you say a sentence like this, or when you hear a sentence like this, uh, it should uh, ring your bell. Uh, it's a red flag. We train ourselves to recognize those red flags and hold uh, whole list, uh, shred that document, or uh, no one will find out uh, just once. So we train ourselves to recognize those red flags. And, uh, and we say, look, uh, and yesterday uh, I, I, I talked to uh, all our colleagues, in fact, not only management, but all our colleagues. And I say, if you ever hear a sentence like this, just ask why. Why do you say that? Because when you say no one will find out, when you say this, you do know that there is something wrong behind and it, that it is not a proper uh, behavior. Okay? Um, when you say everyone does it, you do know it's wrong. Uh, I'm just trying to lower your barriers so that you do it nevertheless. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we train ourselves to recognize this type of sentences and to challenge ourselves. It's part of the courage we must have. So what would your advice be for a company that's just getting started? How do they introduce ethics into their business practices? Okay, uh, uh, maybe I can mention a few elements of a culture of integrity, what I believe are the key elements of a culture of integrity and how we can start uh, something with, uh, we can start a, it's an ethics program, more or less, uh, I don't like the word the ethics program. But um, basically, when, uh, there are certain elements that are required to develop a good culture of integrity. One is uh, make, making sure that uh, everyone in the organization feel free to speak up. It is absolutely key, the ability to speak up. The second, and um, for a number of years, we have been encouraging um, uh, employees or colleagues to, to speak up, but soon we realize that it's not enough. We need to train ourselves and to encourage management to listen actively. Uh, if I do not speak up in an organization, why so? It's not only because I'm shy, but it's mainly because there is no one to listen to me. So it is not enough to put the burden on member of the organization and to say, you should have uh, spoken up. So you have, if, you don't, if you didn't speak up, you're a victim of yourself. Don't blame the organization. I think it's wrong. We need to go much further than that. And we need to recognize that what is important is not only to develop a culture where people feel free to speak up, but uh, as importantly, to develop a culture where management, where colleagues listen actively. The two work together. Uh, the second element of a culture of integrity is uh, good organizational justice. 
we all want to live in, in a country where there is good justice. And uh, uh, of course in New Zealand, uh, you are in an absolutely outstanding uh, situation uh, because there is good justice, good respect for individual rights, uh, but it's, it is more the exception than the rule in the world. At the same time that we want to live in a country where there is good justice, we want to work in a company where there is good justice. What does that mean? It means that the talent are recognized, that people are fairly appraised. It means that if there is a claim, the claim is really being taken care of quickly, that if there is a need, that there is an investigation. But uh, the most important point is to make sure that there is no double standard. Double standards is for the same issue or for the same act, depending whether or not I'm a rainmaker or a senior executive in the organization or someone working the floor, will I be um, a discipline the same way? Okay? If we make differences, we just kill the culture of the organization. So it's a secret, it's like a virus. It's a real killer because everyone know that. They see it, even if they don't talk about it. They see when, it, when in an organization there are double standards. Um, so it is, I think, very important to, to fight against this and, this, and it is a part of my mission to make sure that there is no double standard in the organization. And it can work. We have enough uh, very practical examples in the organization of uh, senior leaders that we uh, asked to go because we felt there were an ethical issue and it was uh, just not tolerable for the organization. Um, so everyone at every level of the organization know and they know we are very serious about it. And we start to, to disclose internally precise statistics about the number of claims, how we dealt with the claims, how many claims were substantiated and how we took corrective measures or disciplinary action. So it is very clear, this transparency that we, for a while, uh, I hesitated to, to be transparent about it, but now we're starting to be transparent for a couple of years uh, and people appreciate, they see that we are uh, serious about it. The third element is openness of uh, communication, the third element of a good culture of integrity. It's sh about sharing of information, many organizations are uh, a bit um, divided in silos. Um, I trust that uh, more sharing of information between colleagues and departments help to have a better culture of uh, a better culture of integrity. The same for the fourth element of a good culture of integrity, which is a clarity of expectation. I want, as an employee or as a member of any organization, I want to know what. Uh, what the organization is expecting from me, what my boss is expecting from me. So the clarity of expectation is very important um, to have a good culture of integrity. If I don't know what you expect from me, I'm a bit lost. I want to know. Um, so we are working on this to make sure that uh, within the organization, we, uh, we are able to, to state clearly uh, what are the expectations at every level of the organization. Ton of the top is of course uh, important, but in a multinational corporation or in a global corporation, um, uh, the top top is far away. It's uh, what 15,000 kilometers from here. Uh, so it's a bit uh, blur. What is very important is how my direct boss behaves. So how the immediate management behave, the direct boss is absolutely crucial. More important, I believe, than what the ultimate boss, how the ultimate boss behave. Of course it's important the ultimate boss, but the direct boss is, uh, the direct leadership is uh, really key. Now, one of the issue behind all this is uh, how do we um, uh, start um, building a culture of integrity? Of course, it starts with the top. If the most senior management does not truly believe in it, uh, it will not fly. Okay. 
so it is uh, the, the real conviction of the top management is crucial. Because if the top management doesn't have a real conviction, it will, uh, it will show. I think people will see it immediately. They will not believe in it. Um, then you, um, you start to measure the ethical leadership. So, and you try to measure it very concretely. And so that's what uh, we do as well we, uh, every year uh, with the top um, leaders of this organization worldwide. We, uh, we measure uh, the reality of the leadership. There, is a num there are a number of uh, ways to measure it. Uh, we see what they do very practically, uh, in which occasions they address their team, what they practically tell their team. Um, things which are very practical and you may feel uh, um, ridiculous, but I think it's visible, is whether the code of ethics is visible in your office. If you are the boss, I want the charter of ethics to be visible in your office because I want your team to see it. When they, and I want uh, stakeholders to see it. I want uh, clients to see it. Okay? Because then they can challenge uh, management on the content. When there is a new employee joining the company, we say, don't give uh, the new employee the charter of ethics uh, in the administrative package with a card for the canteen or with a pension plan. That's a wrong message. See this person, okay, one minute, in fact, uh, 30 seconds, and just, just say, this is our code of ethics, it's important for me, it should be important for you. This is our last event for the year for the Sustainable Business Council, and I just want to take two minutes to let you know what we're focusing on through till Christmas. So one of the things that matters to me in terms of the integrity of the Sustainable Business Council being within Business New Zealand is one of the things we ask all our members to do is their carbon footprint and to talk about what they're doing to reduce it. And I'm very proud to announce that yesterday Business New Zealand went carbon neutral. Woohoo! <laughs> the other thing that we have been working on is working across our membership and the major companies group of Business New Zealand to do a survey on what is actually going on in the business sector on climate within New Zealand and what they think they can do to play more of a leadership role, but also what they're looking for from our negotiating team as they go to the discussions um, in Paris in several weeks' time. And we'll be releasing the survey um, very transparently um, next week and also a business brief which really lays out um, to the negotiators that they've got business behind them to be more ambitious and go further and regardless of what happens business leaders in New Zealand are going to be doing more. So that's our focus and um, through till Paris. Look forward to meeting with our L'Oreal colleagues who are part of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development there and look forward to the exciting announcements that are obviously coming. I just think you know the next few weeks is just going to be hugely exciting in terms of What's, what's coming. So um, that's it from me today. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of this gorgeous Auckland day.